Hey everyone, I haven't done a video in a while, and this is not going to be a bang up video by any means, but I've been watching some um, films about salesmanship, about selling an idea, um, selling something to people, P having, having people get excited about it and get on board with you and that type of thing. And in the street, in street language, on the street, they call that a pitch man. He sells you a pitch. And, you know, you either fall for the pitch or you discard the pitch. And there's some people, especially in politics, that are a lot better pitch men than other people. You have people that uh, are intelligent, have um, analytical minds, for instance, but they may not be able to speak so well. They may, they may not be such a great salesman, uh, so great at the pitch, at selling uh, whatever it is that you're doing. And this is a condition of humanity, selling something to other people. And I found that a lot of this uh, is even in religion, in with the Lord Jesus Christ and selling the Lord to people, a pitch, apologetics, um, you know, the narrow road. Can you sell your pitch to people? Are you a good speaker? Are they going to fall in and say, oh, yeah, that guy really nails it. I can really understand what he's saying. Oh, I agree wholeheartedly. You know, it's a pitch. It's a pitch, but unfortunately, a lot of criminals use pitches, which they don't mean anything that they say. It's just a pitch. And I was thinking about this today, and you know, the Lord God of Israel, Lord Jesus Christ, doesn't need anybody to make a pitch for him. That's exactly right. You know, he doesn't need anybody to make a pitch because he's God. And no more can you make a pitch for the Lord than you can in defending the Lord. The Lord doesn't need you making a pitch, and he doesn't need you defending him. Neither does he need you uh, to be the leader of pointing out where, you know, this person walks so well with the Lord, whereas this person doesn't. You know, these are all uh, perceptions of, of uh, looking at other people. You know, it, it's all, it's all, it's like a big uh, Hollywood production. Who's a good actor? Who isn't? And uh, I was thinking about this today and, you know, I, um, I helped a family member out or tried to, uh, because I thought I was doing my Christian duty to try and help a guy out. And, um, I've spent, um, over six years trying to help a family member out. Because I got blessed to the Lord, and I decided to try to help the uh, less fortunate than myself. I thought that was the thing to do as a, as a good Christian, as a good chaplain. And what I did was, and you could say it's in the flesh, or you could say it was my own, my own uh, pitch, for, or my own perception of what doing what the Lord would have me to do. But all it did was put me in debt. And what and the individual that I was helping just believed he needed more and more and more help. It was never enough. It was never enough. And so, you know, it's it's terribly sobering to find out that, you know, you've done so much, you've given up yourself so much to try to help others, and all they do is expect more. And they think, not only that, but they think they're entitled to it. It's kind of like the social justice thing they had today. They think they're entitled to it because you have more you should share with me. But it never stops. It's never ending. This is the, the human condition. And I've, so I've had to learn. I've had to wise up that, um, you know, the Bible said pray for those who despitefully use you and all. That's right. I think, I think the action of trying to do right before the Lord, I think is, you know, it's the journey rather than the the ending, rather than the reaching the destination. It's the journey of what you 
done with what you were given. And it may not always bear fruit in the world. And certainly, um, my um, trying to help uh, didn't bear fruit in the world. Not at all. In fact, it just made the per person more embittered when I decided to say, no, I'm not helping anymore. This is as far as I can go with you. And another thing that I noticed is that it was always a one-way street. It was always me giving and with not even any thought to, could I get the guy some firewood? Could I do this? Could I do that? You know, I can't make my payments. Is there something I could do for him? No, it was just expected to me of me because of, I had more that uh, I could just unreservedly give of myself and um, nothing was really expected on the individual receiving. And this is, um, this is a hard, hard thing. This is a very, a very hurtful thing to give of yourself. And basically you have givers and you have takers and most people are takers. Now, you know, Warren Buffett said that if you want to be in business with somebody, the most important thing you can do is to trust that person. And now I understand why, because you have to be able to trust them. Trust, trusting a person when you're giving of yourself, when you're helping, trying to help somebody, you have to trust that person to, um, to do right by you and not just take. Because if they just take, you're just nothing but a chump, a sucker, you know? And people, I don't think, seem to get that. And then you have yeah, other people world. that um, look and see that you're actually trying to do the Christian thing. You're trying to help be a helper. It's better to give than to receive. And they just say, oh, well, don't stop. Just keep going. You know, we're accountable for the Lord when we die for what we did, for what we had. But it's amazing to me because the people that are saying that will not give of themselves. Oh, sure. They're willing to tell you to give more or the other person to give more. Let's all get on board and give and help one another, right? But I've noticed something. They're always, they never look in the mirror. They never take it on themselves to actually give or to even try to give or to do something. No, they just want to give lip service to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, sell the pitch, the pitch. Be a pitch man. Sell what Jesus Christ would do. Sell what other, everybody else should be doing. Uh, share how everybody else should be living in the Lord Jesus Christ. But they're not doing it themselves. And it's amazing because the person that I tried to help tells me and my wife, we should read our, read our Bible. The love of money is evil. Well, that's a, um, uh, he didn't actually say that, right? He said money is evil. Well, the love of money is evil. But what I'm trying to say is they can't look in the mirror. They can't put the mirror on themselves. They want it, they want it, Everybody wants to tell somebody else what to do. And I'm just, uh, I'm just putting this video out because of somebody who actually tried to do something, committed to trying to help people, that's never enough. It's never enough. They just want you to keep on going and going and going and going. Kind of this, um, let, let's level the playing field. We can't ever level the playing field because God blesses who he'll bless and curses who he'll curse. Besides that, you have some people that are trustworthy. Some people aren't. Some people are responsible. Some people are irresponsible. So this one size fit all. Uh, everybody for Jesus. That's another thing. Uh, we're all sinners. We, and we all need Jesus. Yeah, well, we are. But, you know, there's different types of sin. There's a natural sin, the natural, the natural wall covers, and there's unnatural sin. Now, unnatural sin is like depravity, sexual depravity. And yes, you can be forgiven, come to Christ and be cleansed from that. But you can't continue in unnatural sin. You know, because for one thing, unnatural sin is demonic. It's not of God at all. So you get what I'm saying here. I'm saying you're, um, you can't pretend that all sin's the same because it's not. Some, some sin actually invokes demonic activity where other ones don't. So the church is really in these, in these people, these pitch men, these people that want their followings. They're people that want to 
talk about how you should do something, but they won't. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it, it, it's very sobering. It's very sobering. And so don't be a sucker like I, like I have trying to help people in this grandiose idealism because it doesn't work. If, if the Lord's not leading you in it, don't do it. Don't do it unless you get a distinct word from the Lord to do it. And usually that doesn't happen by planning things. We're going to plan our mission trip. We're going to plan. We're going to help the poor. We're going to do all these social things. God doesn't work that way. No, it's been my experience of God. And when you need it, that's when you hear from the Lord. If the Lord says, look over there and help that man you know, on the street corner, then you know it immediately. God works immediately when you know it. He's the minute man right on time. You can't plan something for Jesus or plan to do something for somebody. You have to be told, led, um, how to do it. And this is this is this is church thinking. This is this is the pitch, you know, um, the shtick that people put forth in the Lord. And unfortunately, I'm a very poor speaker. It's hard for me to put things over. But if you manage to stay with me this far in the video. Maybe you'll get an inkling of what I'm saying is basically talk is cheap and it costs you. When it costs you something, that's a whole different ball game. Personal pain, finance, whatever. That's a whole different ball, ball game. But people don't care. They just care about what's in it for them. You know, it brings the self, the one-way street, to a whole new level. And, um, you know, very sad that I couldn't continue to help, but, um, you know, I, I can't, I don't have, um, unending resources. I'm not God, you know, it's just like these globalists want to have unending resources to help everybody. What do you think you're God? Or, you know, I mean, they even want to control the damn weather. They think they understand, uh, off a, off a, uh, false, uh, model, you know, a false climate change model. My God, I mean, humanity is just, I mean, they're really, they're really deceived. And, you know, it, it taught, it's taught me one thing. You can do nothing without the Lord. Good day.